Welcome everyone to the fourth day of OTR Essential Christmas and we're going to talk about today the fortunate four of WWE and what do I mean when I say the fortunate four? Well back in history I always point to that time of 2004 to 2005 where the WWE had lost Austin, they lost The Rock, they had just lost Brock Lesnar after investing so much into him and believing that he was going to be the next big thing and buying into that and trying to get others to buy into that. They really put all their eggs into that basket saying he was going to be the franchise player. And then lo and behold, he didn't really love it, he didn't love the travel, he didn't love the lifestyle of being a wrestler, and he picked up his ball and went to try football, and then ultimately UFC, da 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 But the point being is the WWE found themselves in a really bad place at that time in 2004. Sure, you had names from the past that could help you get by, but they had really only focused on one true franchise player for the future, and that was Brock. And once he left, it really left them in a bad spot because they invested so much into him over a two-year stretch and now you're going to get nothing back from it going forward. So what do you do? And I feel like at that point in time, and if you look at history, it kind of backs it up a little bit. The WWE went in a different direction slightly where they wanted to identify four guys where they didn't put all the eggs into one basket, but four guys that you could put some investment in, but you were confident that you could utilize them as enough of a prop to where they targeted specific segments of the audience to where you could still make money. They would be somebody you could count on to be there for the next five, seven to 10 years because they were good enough talents to be able to hold their spot and get enough fans interested. But at the same point in time, they weren't such incredibly great, awesome talents that you worried about them becoming too big and then Hollywood, television, whoever wants to come and take them away. Or these guys loved it just enough to where you weren't gonna be concerned about them leaving because they didn't love it. So to me, that's when in 2004, 2005, in that time frame, the WWE decided their fortune of four was going to be John Cena, Batista, Edge, and Randy Orton. And the first guy they really went to was Randy Orton. And you know that even as you were getting into the beginnings of 2004 and you know even late 2003, you could see that it was all about Randy, 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 Randy. But as the year went along and you started going into 2005, you could see a movement towards Edge. You could see a movement towards Cena. And you most certainly could see a big movement towards Batista. But that's who it was. The fortunate four. Those four guys that the WWE could count on to be there that could still help keep the company viable, keep the company profitable. And for the most part, those guys did their jobs. You know, Batista and Edge were around five to six years after that decision was made. But Cena's still around even in a part-time capacity. Orton's still around in a part-time capacity. But the point is the company, from a bottom line standpoint, in terms of trying to stem the tide and make sure they ensured some type of continual profits, made the right decision. It was Cena, it was Batista, it was Edge and Randy Orton. They made a wise decision based off of what history indicates. Could they have made better decisions? Maybe, maybe not. But that was the decision they made and it worked for them. So now we get to a point, it's 2017 heading into 2018, and you feel like you're in a similar point in time where Lesnar may be leaving, may not, who knows, Cena is winding it down, he's a part-time guy, Randy Orton is winding it down, he's going to be a part-time guy, you have no more edge, Batista's not there, he may come back, but even if he does, that's a short-term thing, that's nothing you count on long-term, that's just a shot of adrenaline for the product. The WWE is in that position again where I feel like for the long-term viability and profitability of the company, they need to identify a new fortunate for. So, so who's it going to be? Who's going to fill those roles of Cena, Batista, Edge, and Randy Orton? Well, I think everybody knows the Cena role is going to be filled by Roman Reigns. We talked about this ad nauseum, so many things about the way the company presents him, packages him, features him. like. He is the default number one guy just like Cena. No matter what else happens, no matter what the fans do, no matter anything else, Cena was the golden goose no matter what, and they made it and manipulated that to happen for a decade. They're doing the same thing with Roman Reigns. They just are. Period. There is no argument. There is no discussion, in my opinion, because it's clear to see. Even if you're a fan of Roman Reigns, fine, whatever. But it's obvious. So much of what they're doing with him like they build up guys just to feed to Roman. Everything they're doing is about Roman, 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 Roman. Just like it was with Cena. And you could say, is he that type of guy? Mm -hmm. But he's the guy that WWE is going with. So 
is obvious. Roman Reigns equals the John Cena of the new Fortunate Four. I think Batista's role is filled by Braun Strowman, a guy that for some is preferable and largely much more preferable than Roman Reigns, a guy like Braun Strowman who can be forced down your throat, but it won't always be to the same level like a Roman Reigns, you know, equivalent to John Cena. So it'll be a fourth, but it won't be quite the same. They will look at a guy like Braun Strowman, think he's a bigger badass like Batista was compared to Cena. Uh, Strowman could be a little underrated, similar to Batista in terms of his ability to connect with the audience, his ability to do different things, his ability to cut an effective promo, you know, versatility of character. I see Braun Strowman and I see similarities with Batista. Now, obviously, he's a much bigger dude than Batista, but I don't, also don't know if he's quite the talent of Batista. But I do feel like there are similarities there. Like you could take Cena and Batista, put them on different shows, which should be the design. And I feel like long term, the design should be Roman on one show, Strowman on the other show. You really don't want to have both of those guys on the same brand. I don't feel like that's the best utilization of your resources. I don't think it's the best fit to kind of have those two similar type of guys to a degree on the same show. Especially when they've already feuded together because you really don't want to go back to them feuding anytime soon. So Roman and Strowman really feel like the Cena and Batista. Uh, in terms of the edge role, I look at Seth Rollins. And no, I don't think he's quite the in-ring performer that Edge was. I most certainly don't think he's the personality, the character, the talker that Edge was. But in 2017, 2018 WWE, he's probably about the closest you're going to get at this time. So it is what it is. But you look at a guy like Edge, he was a guy that had made money with the company over the years as part of his tag team work. The company had tried to do different things to kind of put him over the top. And then eventually when he became the rated R superstar, it really worked. Well, you look at Seth Rollins with The Shield. Obviously, they invested quite a bit of money in him, and they made merch money off of him. Uh, then they have really forced Seth Rollins more than they did Roman Reigns for a period of time. And you can argue Edge was forced a lot, especially once the shit with Matt Hardy and Lita went down and everything else. There was definitely a period of time where Edge was being forced. And you could see some of that same force in Seth Rollins. But when you look at a Seth Rollins similarly to Edge, you're looking for a guy... I can appeal a little bit more to that hardcore type of fan base, the guys that aren't necessarily into the bigger monsters, the guys that like this type of guy. Maybe you feel like you have a little more versatility, but again, a guy you've invested quite a bit in, but with his age, you feel like you can get several more years out of him. And I feel like, based off of what I've seen, the closest to filling that edge role is probably Seth Rollins. But it's funny, as you look at it, Cena, Batista, Edge, Reigns, Strowman, Rollins... It feels like you're getting a Kmart version of the Walmart Fortunate Four. Just saying. But it is what it is, and it is the best that the WWE has at this present time is the way I see it. But then we get to the Randy Orton role. And Randy Orton for several years was the guy that was the anti-Cena. He didn't wear all the fruity colored crap. He didn't say all the stupid crap in his promo. He was allegedly much better in the ring. Deep down, a lot of these guys were hot for him because of the sleeve tattoos, the construction worker beard, the baby oil, the baby oil, the baby oil. Him finding the gopher hole, the top rope, middle rope pose, and of course the raging ring boner. But... He definitely had a role. He was somebody that you could keep on a brand separate from Cena and do things with. He's also somebody that you could merge over and you do things with Cena or with Batista or with Edge or whatever the case might be. But again, a guy like Orton was somebody who had been in the business um, in terms of his family. He was third generation. So you felt like he was a guy that the company saw that they could invest in. And even if he wasn't going to be an overpowering superstar, he was going to be enough of a star and enough fans were going to like him where he could make money with him. And that's what ultimately happened. But you look at it now. Who the hell is going to play that Randy Orton role in this new Fortunate Four? I feel like this is an issue and the WWE needs to figure it out. Um, what, Finn Balor? Now maybe in Triple H's world, he's part of the Fortunate Four. Uh, but, but Vince is still in charge, at least for the time being. And that's not happening. And even in that case, you're talking about a Finn Balor in his late 30s. Is that really the guy that you're confident is going to be around for 5, 7, 10 years? I don't know. Then you look at Bray Wyatt. You would say Bray Wyatt in a sense of, obviously somebody in this company hasn't chosen to invest a lot in the character. And even though a lot of fans don't like him, and even though a lot of fans have kind of turned their back on him, 
ultimately the guy still gets featured, that he still gets pushed, and they always make sure they have a story for him. So you could say that you look at a Bray Wyatt and you say he might be the guy to fill the Randy Orton role. You could argue that he does more of filling the Randy Orton hole since Orton used to fill JoJo and now Bray Wyatt fills JoJo. <laughs> Thank you, I'll be here all week. But I mean, seriously though, when you look at Bray Wyatt, you see a character over four plus years that has just been totally devalued, that totally lacks in generating any interest. I just don't see where long term there's going to be a lot of appeal because again, where Randy Orton was just kind of the legend killer and then he became the Viper, but he was kind of like a basic guy. Bray Wyatt is kind of like a character character. And if those characters don't evolve and they don't change and they don't get better, then they eventually just wilt and die, which is exactly what's happening. So in some sense, based off of what they invested in, he makes a lot of sense. But on the other hand, he makes absolutely no sense. Baron Corbin, child, please. Kevin Owens, we'll see how much longer he's even there. But will enough people in the WWE really buy into him that much to put him in that slot? Now they could, but I don't know if they feel like they can count on Kevin Owens. Because part of it is they have to feel like they can count on a guy. And I just don't know if he can. Also, I don't know if Kevin Owens can do the type of backstage politicking that is necessary to keep your position as part of the Fortune Four, like a Randy Orton could do, because that man could politic just like a Cena could freaking politic, unless Orton ran up against God in the run-up to WrestleMania 25, then that's a different story. I think the WWE really was hoping that it was going to be Ambrose, and I'm just questioning it now because of the uh, arm injury that'll have him out, it looks like, through WrestleMania season. It's just Dean Ambrose is a significantly devalued property. He is somebody that they have really tried to spin the wheels of figuring out how to get this guy to really, really connect. And I just don't feel like it's happened. You could say, well, he's connected when he's with Seth Rollins or he's connecting when it's, you get Roman Reigns in there and they're the shield. But again, that's about nostalgia pops. It's not about anything this guy specifically does that is incredibly awesome or inherently cool. But... The company has invested a lot in him. He's still a younger guy. He's still a guy that could be around for several more years. I just don't think enough people in the WWE with the powers that be believe enough in him that they feel like he could be a consistent enough guy to produce at a certain level. And I feel like they're absolutely right at this point. So I, I have to say, I, I'm wondering with... The Cena role being clearly filled by Roman Reigns, in my opinion, the Batista role being filled somewhat admirably by Braun Strowman, and then the Edge role being filled by a Kmart version of him in Seth Rollins. I wonder who's going to fill that Randy Orton role. So who do you think is either the fourth member of WWE's new Fortunate Four? And if not already who do you think will be or should be and why i'm curious to see your answers but either way it feels like the wwe does need to get this figured out because you need to have those next four guys that you can build your identity and your company around for the next five seven to ten years and i feel like they're figuring it out and kind of getting there uh, but they're not all the way there yet and that could be a little concerning but anyways, that's been the fourth day of OTR Central Christmas. Tune in next time for the third day of OTR Central Christmas. Ooh, this should be a fun one. So, remember OTR Central. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. I'm the Schlag Daddy, and I'll see you later.